Hey, what is up guys and welcome back to the FCS Football Channel. And today we are back with another match preview, this time for Manchester United versus West Ham, of course, in the Premier League. Now, there will be a watch long for this game. Kickoff is at 3pm, so we will start the stream at about half two, where we'll go through, of course, the lineups and what we really make of the, of the game on the day. Uh, of course, also with it being a three o'clock game, we will keep a, an eye on all the other games going on at that time. So please do make sure you tune into that. Like I said, stream starts at half two and kickoff is at three. Now going into the preview, Manchester United come into this game sat in seventh place, having picked up just seven points from our last 15 available, while West Ham sit up in fourth place, having picked up nine points from their last 15 available. So on the on the form table and just the, the standard league table, West Ham come into this game on top. Now Manchester United in their last game, we did of course play Brentford in which we won 3-1 with well three academy graduates in Mason Greenwood, um, Marcus Rashford and Anthony Alanga all um, scoring goals. Ivan Tony did score one for Brentford, of course, um, a late consolation goal in a game where were we fantastic in the second half? We were closer to that fantastic mark. I wouldn't say we were amazing, but we weren't terrible. I think first half we were dreadful and we should have went into that game into half time two goals down. And I think that really does show that this Manchester United team, we haven't kicked on really since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer left. And there is still a long way for this team to go. If we want to be anywhere near where the likes of Manchester City and Liverpool are, where they are consistently getting wins and are pushing for Premier League titles. Because at the moment, we are absolutely nowhere near that. West Ham in their last game played Leeds United, where they lost 3-2 in a game where it was very open. Both teams had a lot of chances. West Ham did miss a absolute sitter in the last minute through Jarrett Bowen to level up in that game for real. But Jack Harrison, of course, did score a hat-trick for Leeds United, um, seeing them win against West Ham, like I said, 3-2. Now, of course, United have played West Ham um, twice already this season. First, we played them in the league at, um, of course, London Stadium, isn't it now, where we won 2-1. Cristiano Ronaldo equalised the game after Ben Rama gave West Ham an early lead. And then last few minutes, Jesse Lingard scored a fantastic goal against the team that he was on loan at last season to give Manchester United all three points. But, of course, last minute, Mark Noble did have a penalty saved by De Gea to, well, I guess, secure the three points. About four days later, we played them in the League Cup where they beat us 1-0 thanks to an early Manuel Lanzini goal. So, it's going to be a close game. Both game, look, both games were extremely close, ex extremely tight, and either team could have won it on either day. So I expect this game to be very, very similar. When it comes to team news, West Ham have got a few players uh, missing for this game. When you look at uh, West Ham, they've got Ben Rama, who, yes, he's just been knocked out of the AFCON. He won't be available for this game. Um, Ogbonna is out with a um, knee injury, while Kurt Zuma, who has been out for a long time this season, is back in training, but isn't believed to be available for today. Mark Noble and Thomas Suchek are both doubts for this game, having missed the game against Leeds um, previously. Now, what, what kind of system do West Ham play? They play a 4 2 3 1. Um, fairly pragmatic, but still a hard work and attacking side. They play um, Fabianski in goal, a back four of Kufal and Cresswell as the, as the full-backs. Most likely, we're going to see um, both Craig Dawson and Diop as the two central centre-backs. In the midfield, it will be Declan Rice and he'll partner either Thomas Suchek, Manuel Lanzini, Mark Noble, or maybe even a Thomas Crow. I think with, no, with um, Rice and Lanzini, that midfield is a bit... Um, unbalanced and will give Manchester United a better chance in this game. However, with Thomas, if Thomas Crow is a more defensive-minded player, um, if Noble and Sushek aren't available, I think he would probably come in for this game just to kind of make that midfield a little bit more solid. However, if Sushek is fit, he will, of course, start. In a front three behind the central striker, we were going to see players like uh, Pablo Fornals, Jared Bowen, and most likely Nikola Vlasic, with, of course, Mikhail Antonio leading the line. 
Like I said, Ben Rama's not available yet or isn't believed to be available. So he will miss out. But if he was available, we would likely see him start. When it comes to Manchester United, we of course have Paul Pogba out. He's back in, tra match, um, back in training, but he's not match fit. He will be most likely after the next lot of international games. Juan Basaka is ill. We're not, we don't believe it's COVID, but he is ill. So he will miss out today. Um, and again, he's believed to be back available after the international fixtures. We've then got Luke Shaw and Henderson Cavani both out with Knox, while Jesse Lingard misses out um, of this game due to an ankle injury. So there is no chance of him scoring once again against the team that he went on loan to last year. And there's rumours he might be joining this, well, ne next season or potentially even on loan this year. When we're going into what team I believe Ralph Franklin will start, this is it. So, of course, in recent weeks, we have gone to a 4-3-3. Uh, a system which we believed we would have been playing at the start of this season, given Ole Gunnar Solskjaer had said that's what we're going to play um, in pre-season. We have gone to that now. Uh, I think we're going to see the same back four. Well, in fact, I think we're going to see the same team start that we did against Brentford. So, that's David De Gea and Goal, a back four of... Dallo, Lindelof, Varane and Tellez. I think they played very well together. David De Gea once again keeping Manchester United in football games. It's not something we want to keep seeing because top teams don't have a goalkeeper that, re that they rely on keeping them in games. But at the moment, that's what David De Gea is doing and you cannot drop a goalkeeper that is doing that for you. Dallo got man of the match against Brentford. I'm not sure he was man of the match, but he did play well alongside the rest of the defence and I'm happy to see them continuing playing. The midfield, I'm not too happy about, but I think Ralph Radnick will stick with it. Um, second half, McTominay was much better, but I think that was more because he was playing... It, it was, he played well for an eight, not a six. It's weird, but he, even though he played as a six, but he did the role of an eight, and I thought he did that really well. I think Ralph Radnick will stick with it, and I think that will be a, a mistake. And in the front line, I think Greenwood, he scored. Alanga has been fantastic in his last two starts. I think he will probably keep his place. And Cristiano Ronaldo, he was subbed off um, last game, not because he wasn't playing well, but to keep, keep him fit and fresh for this game. When it comes to my team, I've gone for the same back four and goalkeeper. Look, I'm happy for wan Saka or Luke Shaw to come in, but by the looks of it, they're both going to be out. So these the, the defence has to say the same. I don't want to see Harry Maguire anywhere near that starting eleven. I thought he came on. And I don't think he was great. I think you just stick with this back four until they until they make a mistake or one of them has to drop out. Because at the moment, especially these two centre-backs, they don't deserve dropping. In the midfield, I've gone for Nemanja Matic as the sitting player. He has to play. He's the only player that can play that number six role effectively. So for me, he has to start. And then in the two in front of him, I've gone for Donny van der Beek and Bruno Fernandes. I just want to see Donny van der Beek play. I think McTominay played really well in that second half in that number six role. So if McTominay does start, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to complain at all because you, look, you know I'm not the biggest fan of McTominay. If he if he starts in that number eight role alongside Bruno as that box to box player where he is best, I'm not going to complain. I would just, I just think I want players who's better on the ball and can pass the ball and can play the game much better, and that is what Donny Van Der Beek can do. And alongside Bruno Fernandes, who is our key chief creator, he's fantastic, got two assists, should have scored himself. Bruno Fernandes has to play, so I think he will. Martial out on the left. Alanga's playing really well at the moment, and it was tough to drop him. I just think, get your best players on the pitch. And I think that is Anthony Martial. And Jadon Sancho out on the right. Obviously, he missed the last game against Brentford due to um, him going to, attending a funeral for, I believe it was his auntie. So, obviously, my best wishes go to... Him and his family. Um, but if he if he's available for today, I think he has to play. I think creative creativity wise, fantastic. And I think we have in the brief times we've seen a kind of a front well or a midfield, I would say, midfield five of Martial, Sancho, Bruno, Matic, and Donny van der Beek was Watford, and we were fantastic in that second half against Watford before Maguire's red card. And I want to see more of it. So that's why I've gone for that. And Cristiano Ronaldo up top. You give him a chance, he'll probably score it. You've got to play Cristiano Ronaldo. Give him the service, he will score goals. He's a mentality monster. Get him the service. Let us go.
go attack this game. And with the players we've got on the pitch, we are good, more than good enough to win this game. Let's talk about the game because I think this is this is going to be a difficult game. Like I said, West Ham are hard working. They're pragmatic. They will they will leave it all out on the pitch, and they're they're in fourth place for a reason, and they've deserved to be in that fourth place. They've been fantastic. And David Moyes has really got on playing well. And we've, we've struggled against David Moyes' teams and West Ham teams of in recent years. Of course, like I said earlier, we beat them uh, in the league. That was a very 50-50 game. I was there to watch it live. Very 50-50 game. In the League Cup, very similar um, state of affairs. Last season, we I can't remember exactly what we did against them last season. I know we beat them once after playing a really poor first half. Second half, second game, did we beat them? Maybe 2-0. Whatever it was, it was a close game. After lockdown, we drew 1-0. It's, it's always close when we play West Ham. And I don't expect it to be any different today. They've got some real quality and talented players that can cause a lot of issues for this Manchester United team. Mikel Antonio is a player that can... Pro that If you get him against Victor Lindelof, it, it will be an interesting battle. Ben Rama being missing for them is a big miss for them. As, as well as a player like a Sushek. However, look, they're a good team still and they've shown that since these players have been missing. However, I do think that midfield is just slightly unbalanced for me without Sushek. And then with him missing, I think Manchester United do have the upper hand and I think we will win the game. If I'm being optimistic, I think I wouldn't be surprised if we draw the game. I wouldn't be surprised if we lose the game. But I'm going to be optimistic and go for a win. In what will be a very, very difficult game. I'm going to go for a 2-0 Manchester United win. Anyway, if you have enjoyed, please do hit that like button below. And subscribe if you are new and you haven't already. That would be greatly appreciated. And let me know down below in the comment section what your prediction for this game is. And please do, again, tune in for the watch long. Details are on my side. Anyway, like I said, thank you all for watching. And I'll see you all in the next one. In a bit. Peace.